Today, I'm going to be going over a popular coding interview problem called two-sum. The problem goes, you are given an array of n integers and a number k. Determine whether there's a pair of elements in the array that sums to exactly k. For example, given the array 1, 3, 7 and k equals 8, the answer is yes. But given k equals 6, the answer is no. After the interviewer gives you the problem, feel free to take some time to ask questions about anything you might not understand, or if you believe that additional information might help you solve the problem. For example, some questions that I might ask are, is the array sorted? Not necessarily. Can there be duplicate numbers in the array? Yes, there can. It's okay if you can't immediately think of the best solution to the problem. Sometimes I like to first give the naive solution and improve on it later. So let's start with a naive solution. The first thought that comes to my mind is trying every combination of pairs through brute force. If we find a pair that adds up to the target sum, we can return true. Otherwise, if we check all the pairs and none add up to the target sum, we can return false. Let's try coding this solution. So I'm going to have two loops, one outer and one inner. And the outer loop will go through all the numbers, while the inner loop will only go through the numbers following the number in the outer loop. And I'm going to add up these numbers and check if they sum up to the target sum. And if they do, then we can just return true. Otherwise, if we go through the entire list of pairs and we don't get any that sum up to the target sum, we can return false. Now let's verify our solution with some test cases. Over here I have two examples given in the problem statement. Usually we'll have to come up with our own test cases and we should probably think of some edge cases. So let's come up with some. Uh, one possible edge case could be having an empty array. Another possible edge case could be having a duplicate number that ends up summing to the target. And finally, another test case could be having a single number that is the target. So let's verify that these test cases pass. Yep, it looks good. Now the interviewer will probably ask about the space and time complexity of your solution. Since we're not creating any new data structures, the space complexity is O of 1. For time complexity, our solution has two nested for loops, each iterating about n times. n times n is n squared, so our solution has a time complexity of O of n squared. We can definitely do better than that. Let's brainstorm a better solution. Oftentimes, a data structure could organize the data and allow us to solve the problem much more efficiently. A hash table or a set, both essentially the same data structure, sounds like a pretty good idea. Sets allow us to look up membership in constant time, which is quite powerful. Our new solution could be the following. We'll loop through all the numbers in the array and check if there's a corresponding number in the set such that they add up to the target sum. If that number exists, we can return true. Otherwise, we place the current number in the set and continue on with our loop. If we go through all the numbers without a match, then we can return false. Let's try coding this solution. First, I'm going to start by initializing an empty set. Then we're going to loop through all the numbers in the array. And what we want to look for in the set is the target number, target sum, minus the current number we're at. And remember, looking up membership in a set is a constant time operation. And if we do find this number, we can return true. Otherwise, we add the current number to the set and continue on with the for loop. If we go through the for loop and don't find any matches, then finally we can return false. So let's take a look at these previous test cases that we wrote and verify that our second solution is correct. 
Yep, looks good. Now let's look at the space and time complexity. Since we're storing up to n numbers in the set, our space complexity is O of n. We're looping at most n times, and each time we perform a constant time operation. So our time complexity is O of n. This is pretty good. In fact, this is the best possible time complexity for this problem. I hope you guys enjoyed walking through this problem with me. If there's any problems you would like me to cover in the future, please feel free to leave it in the comment. I'll post these solutions on GitHub and leave a link in the description. Thanks.